how to paint rose leaves in watercolour. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find watercolour and mixed media tips and techniques as well as a little bit of business, social media and online selling for artists. So please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using a peach rose painting that I started in a couple of previous videos. One of them I showed you how to paint the background of flat wash and the other one I showed you how to paint the rose itself. As we go through, I'll put some links up to those and also I'll put them in the description so that you can watch the, uh, the painting from start to finish as it were, if you would like. So we're not going to be taking a really botanical approach to these leaves. We're just gonna be looking at how to paint them fairly realistically and how to use them to show the, uh, the rose off to its full dramatic effect. So what I'm gonna do now is point the camera downwards. We'll go through some color mixes. I'll explain to you what I'm gonna do. We'll look at the properties of rose leaves themselves and then I'll show you how to paint them. So here we're looking down at the rose painting I started previously. You can see it's a beautiful peachy pink rose and we've got this flat wash lilac background. If you'd like to know how to do either of these things, I have video tutorials for you. So if you would like to know how to do this flat background, now I do show you in my flat wash video exactly how to do this background, but it's also a video generally about how to paint a flat wash. So, and uh, which paintbrush to use and things like that. So I'm gonna to link to that up above in the information cards. You can click on that if you want to watch that one later. I also have another video where I show you exactly how I painted the rose and this little bit of pink on the bud. Again, I'll link to that above and you can click on those if you'd like to watch those later on. Perhaps follow this tutorial from start to finish. Now, when it comes to the leaves themselves, I wanna think about colors and I wanna think about the properties of rose leaves. Now, I've got a, uh, a magazine photograph I was working from. To be honest, at this time of year, it's really hard to find um, any roses with leaves on. It's almost Christmas here, as you can see from my Christmas nails. And the photographer has blurred these uh, these rose leaves out in the background. I don't want to go exactly to the uh, the photograph anyway because they you know would have issues with copyright infringement. So I'm just taking it as loose inspiration. So what do I do when I haven't got much information about the uh, the rose leaves? Will I consider previous paintings I've made of roses and previously how I mix the colours and I also consider looking at Google and seeing those properties and just thinking carefully about what these leaves actually look like. Now there's some certainly some properties that go for rose leaves all over so depending on species you generally have this serrated effect to some of the leaf edges. You also have the thing where you have the veins which are generally slightly lighter um, than the leaves themselves, which tend to be a rather dark, quite a strong, but a dark, dull green. And sometimes you have a bit of shine to them. They're rather waxy, so there might be a little bit of shine on them too. The stems, like the stems of most plants, tend to be a little bit lighter. And we're also gonna go a little bit lighter on this bud here, so that we show that up and show the difference between the stems and the leaves themselves. Um, the leaves themselves also have veins on. And one thing that um, sometimes happens in other plants, but specifically to roses, is there's often a bit of the rose red or the rose pink or even the purple in the, uh, in the greens themselves. So we're going to look at putting those in too. So before I look at the colours, I'm going to consider if I have enough information in the drawing itself. And I'm also going to clean up the drawing, which I've already done a little bit before I switch the camera on. So in other words, um, things like this stem here, um, I don't need any pencil, you know, and the same with this leaf here. I don't need any pencil around these outside areas because they're being shown up now by the background. You want to take the pencil out as, at an as earlier stage as possible because that way you're not trapping it under any paint. So if we look, for instance, um, if we look at this leaf down here, I have got the, um, the outside edge here is shown up by the background purple and the inside edge here is shown up by the edge of the rose. I'm gonna take as much pencil out of there as will come out. Now, I'm not gonna take this center line out because I still need that. So anywhere that you can take out some of your pencil, you want to do that now and get the, uh, get the painting itself as clean as possible. Now, in addition to taking out pencil, I'm gonna put some in actually, because I would like to show a few veins on these larger leaves, just for a bit of drama. So what I'm gonna do is actually going to, I'm going to draw. So let me just move that in a little bit, so hopefully you can see. And 
I'm going to draw a centre line down there. And I've had a look, uh, you know, I've had a look on Google and seen how these uh, these rows, uh, these these veins on these leaves look. And what I've noticed is that they are uh, each each side of the veins is more or less even. It's, you know, where one starts on one side of the main vein, it starts on the other side. There's often just a slight slight offset to it, and they curve up and out. And we can use them to show the shape of the uh, of the rose leaf itself. Um, again, so I've got a couple of other um, of other leaves where I want to show these veins, and I'm going to take them up and out, and just like I said, use them to show the curves and the shapes of the uh, of the leaf itself. Now, this uh, this leaf I'm drawing at the moment here has got a bit of a, a bend to the centre of it, so we're going to we're going to start showing that as well with the veins themselves. I don't want to overdo it. We're not going for botanical. We're just going for uh, for beauty and for drama. So I think I've got enough drawing there, and now I'm going to consider my colour mixing. So I've got a scrap of paper now to try my colours out. Now, generally for rose leaves, I would probably select maybe um, Prussian blue, or even if I wanted a slightly duller effect, ultramarine. Now, the blue that I used in the background and balancing out some of these uh, these greys here was Tropical Thalo Blue by the SAA. So it's an incredibly bright colour. It's a staining colour, which is good. Now you need a staining colour for rose leaves. There's no point using something like um, a cerulean blue. You just won't get those strong darks. And what we've got here in the rose itself is we've got lights and we've got mid-tones. So the rose leaves are gonna be what gives us the darks, the strong darks. So we need a strong blue, but this one is not the right one. Um, it's rather too turquoise and it's incredibly bright. So if I mix it with the yellow that I used previously on the rose, which is a cadmium yellow light, you'll see that I'm gonna get an incredibly bright green. However, it can be adjusted, it's not too far off. So rather than use one of those slightly more suitable blues, what I'm gonna do is go with the blue that I've used already, and I'm gonna adjust it by dropping in some of the red or the purple that I've used. And what this will do is it will just neutralize a little bit. So if I take, for instance, some of my permanent blue violet that I used previously, and we put that in, can you see how it just dulls the color a little bit? And I can adjust that as much as I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up a big puddle of the, uh, the tropical phthalo blue with the cadmium yellow light. It's gonna be slightly too bright, and I'm gonna put the tiny, tiny, tiniest amount of the, uh, of the purple, but you could also use the pink in, and what that's gonna do is it's just gonna neutralize that green and just take the brightness off of it. So I've got a big puddle of green paint mixed up now, so that's the tropical phthalo blue and the cadmium yellow light, which is a Talon's Rembrandt color if you're keeping track. And also I've put a little bit of the permanent blue violet in, which again is um, a Talon's Rembrandt color. So I tend to work between the brands, but I have a lot of Talon's Rembrandt because that's the brand I started with. In my next video, actually, I'm going to be trying a completely new brand of watercolours, a British brand that I've just been sent, so that's rather exciting. So if you enjoy colour mixing and you like seeing new paints, do subscribe to the uh, the channel, it's free. So what I'm going to look at is using this mix as a base. However, there are a lot of areas where we need lighter paint. So on this bud, for example, and some of these um, stems, we want a lighter green. And I actually want very sort of light veins on the leaves themselves. Now, what I could do with these veins is there's you know, various approaches. I could try masking them out with masking fluid. I'm finding I use uh, less and less masking fluid. I avoid it whenever I can. It just tends to look very harsh and unnatural. I'm actually going to, instead of using that, I'm going to paint these veins, these, um, these leaves, the whole leaf I'm gonna paint in a very pale green, and then I'm gonna let it dry. I'm just gonna paint the dark green in between. However, if you are, uh, you find that impossible to do, you could use masking fluid. What I'd advise you to do in that case is paint your light green all over the leaf, let it dry, and then apply your masking fluid just to the veins. And then when you rub the masking fluid off later on, rather than having a load of white gaps, you've got to try and get some color into the, uh, the gaps are actually going to be the light green paint. So that's another way of doing it. If you don't think you can paint neatly enough to go around, there's always, um, there's always different options for different people. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this green that I've made here. Don't mix your colors on top of your painting, by the way. It's, uh, 
it's a very dangerous thing to do. I'm only doing it so that you can see on camera. So what I'm going to do is take a bit of that colour and I'm going to lighten it by adding lots of water and also some more of the cadmium yellow light. So what I want to go for is a really sort of pale, fresh colour that's just going to peek through those dark leaves. And this is going to be the colour of the veins. So we've started with that first colour mix, added water and some more yellow. So um, let's get my swatch and try it out. It's not bad, is it? I think I'd like it a bit lighter than that. So all I'm going to do is add more water. I'd also like it a bit more yellow. So I think we'll add a bit more yellow too. And see how that looks. Don't forget these colours will also dry lighter. There we are. I'm much happier with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that colour right over the leaves with the veins. So I'm not going to worry about the other leaves, but I'm going to paint it right over the leaves with the veins. Now I'm using a, uh, I've got a size 6 brush here, but I think actually I'm going to change up to my size 10 because it'll just go on a bit quicker. So this is actually going to end up as the colour of the veins. I'm just going to move that forward so you can see a little better. But at the moment, I'm just painting it all over the leaf. As I said, it's, it's much easier to do it this way than to try and fit light colours into white gaps later on, or even just to sort of um, to paint the, the veins themselves and then try and paint the dark around. You always want to avoid having those white gaps showing through. It looks very strange, very amateurish. So if you can knock out all of the colour straight away, then uh, you don't have to worry later on about those white gaps coming back to haunt you. So I'm just placing that colour over the entire leaf and I'm going to do it with the other two leaves that have veins on as well. So those other two big leaves. So that would be this one here and this one here. I'm going to put this colour all the way across and then let it dry. So as those areas are drying, what I'm doing now is I'm moving on to painting my bud. Apologies that there's a tiny bit of paint on here already. That's because um, the studio telephone keeps ringing. I'm ignoring it, but um, there we are. So I'm painting now wet into wet. So instead of going on with flat mixed colour, I'm putting the colour straight on the paper. Now, of course, this yellow is going to be too bright. But as we mix the other colours in, it's going to dull down, so don't worry about that. So what I'm doing now is going in with the Tropical Thalo Blue. Now you can see I'm painting both sides at once. That's because they join together around the middle there. I don't want a load of drawing lines. I'm going to work down both sides equally. I'm also going to drop a little bit of the, uh, of the red pink in there as we go along, because as I said at the beginning, you often get touches of the uh, of the red of the rose appearing in the green now look at that isn't it beautiful so we're going straight in there with those colors and i'm taking care that there's always a lot of uh, a lot of drama between areas so i'm thinking ahead these leaves here are going to be fairly dark so i don't want to go too dark here i'm just getting that little blush of color in there and then working it down to the bottom and then I think we'll go back I'm just going to pick up a bit of the green I mixed previously we'll go back down here in with some lighter color so that we end up with a difference of of tone and color between all the areas we're working in there's not much difference here between the light pink and the light yellow so what I'm going to do is just go a little bit darker down there pick up the tiniest bit of the phthalo blue on my paintbrush so that I can just sort of show up the contrast between the pink and the green. So there we are. I'm really quite happy with that little bud and I'm going to obviously let it dry before I paint any of the leaves that are near it. So now looking at the stems and I'm going to do the same again. I'm just going to go straight in with my paintbrush and straight in with the yellows and the blues. And working wet into wet like this, it just gives your painting a little bit more interest. Now it can be overdone. If I did it everywhere on every petal and in every part of the background, you know, the whole thing would look very sort of blotchy and muddled. 
So I do like to contrast this technique with other areas of, um, of flat colour. So you never want to be the sort of artist that's only got one technique in their, in their arsenal, as it were, and that you just do that everywhere. Of course, those things can look pretty, but you really want to be able to do everything. You want to be able to paint neatly and loosely and have flat washies and also have, uh, have wet into wet areas. That red has gone on there a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to keep blending the green down, which will just kill it off a little bit. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush up the edge here and uh, I'm try and get that nice neat edge. I'm going to bring it a bit further on to the camera in case you can't see. It's extremely hard to tell what's on camera and what's not. So if the uh, if the camera does go out of shot for a second or two, really don't worry about it. I'll always bring it back on very soon. So again, I've got that interest there. I've got that uh, variation of colours. I think that yellow is slightly unrealistic. So I'm just going to put the tiniest, tiniest drop of green in there. And there we go. Again, I'm quite happy with that one. I've also got these areas here where I've got sort of stems and things going on. So I'm going to do the same there. And for this one over here, let's do the same over there. So again, starting with the yellow and spreading down. Look at that. We get a nice contrast there, but it's a bit unrealistic. So again, just going to go in with a little touch of the, uh, of the blue down the bottom. So we turn that to green. And then perhaps we'll pop a little bit of that red in up the top. I'm calling it red. It's really a, uh, a rose pink, a peachy rose pink. But technically speaking, from a colour mixing point of view, you use the pinks in the same way that you use the reds. So that's why I tend to refer to them as reds. And if you put them on strongly enough, they'll appear red anyway. So again, taking my brush along there. Now I'm manipulating the water levels. If it looks like it's going too dark like it did there, what I'm doing is just drying, cleaning and drying my brush and lifting some colour out. I'm actually thinking about doing that to this one over here as well because I think it's gone a little bit too dark. So I'm put a bit of water on there and lift some of that colour out. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these other areas here. I might as well, just for a bit of variation, because I'm going to have these dark leaves, I might as well over here just have a slightly lighter leaf. So again, I'm going to go in with the yellow. You can see on this one, and if you watch the previous video, you'll see that I made a bit of a mess here and got some pink over onto that leaf. Um, but I, uh, I used a technique in a video that I've got that shows you how to correct mistakes. And I washed most of it out. Some of it stayed, of course, but it was enough that I can just overpaint it now. And there, you'll never know that there was any problem there. So again, I've got a bit too much colour contrast there. So I'm just going to put some water on there and just keep blending until I'm happy with that colour combination. As I said, this one hasn't got any of the purple in, so it's going to end up being a little bit lighter and brighter than some of the others. But that's good because you want a bit of uh, a bit of difference in colour between your leaves. And you'll notice that I'm using the same colour combinations here. I'm just going between the same blue, the same yellow, and then where I need it, dropping in either a little bit of the pink or a little bit of the purple. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of pink in this one here, just so that we get an impression of that pink going in to the rose leaves. And I can go darker along this edge here because what we're doing here is we're showing up the uh, the pale of the petal against dark. And as you get towards the end of a painting, that's always what you want to be doing, looking at increasing those areas of drama. The same with this edge down here. I don't want to get rid of that little bit of yellow, but I can just go a little bit darker next to the edge of the pink there. And again, that gives me that tonal contrast and shows up the petal. So I've painted a few more of those stems. I'm just going to do one more sort of fairly brightly coloured leaf here. And then we're going to paint. We're going to go back to these leaves that we started over here. And then at the end, I'm going to do a technique that I like to call ghost leaves so that, uh, uh, that again was taught to me by a botanical artist. So here I'm going to go in this one here. You'll notice I'm not touching these areas that are wet. So between each, um, each bud, each leaf, each petal, you want a crisp hard edge because that's how it appears in nature. So the bud is dry now, so it means I can go into this leaf here. 
So again, I'm going to go on actually and start almost straight away with the with the pink. Never be worried about putting these bright colours on your paper. You know, it can be a real sort of panic thing. Oh, no, that's completely unrealistic and far too bright. But it really doesn't matter because we've got red here. Now, as soon as I uh, take a bit of green onto that, it's going to kill that colour right down. So we've got that lovely bright red, pinky red. And what I'm going to do now is get a bit of that colour and mixed up at the beginning of the video, which is really for these other leaves. But I'm just going to pop a bit in there. So there we are. I don't want this one to be too dark so I'm going to go in actually just with sort of some clean water here and just start to get a bit of brightness to it. Look at that nice brightness there and then I'm going to go in with some yellow and you can see how that dark green has just sort of neutralized the red. It's almost become grey which is uh, is what would happen because you've got those colour opposites and I'm going to go into a bit of this yellow here. It's still being rather dulled by the colours that are right next to it so let's go in from the top now and bring that bright yellow downwards and maybe even we'll get a little bit of the, uh, the phthalo blue in there so we get a bit more green going on. Do you see the contrast here between the dark on the bud and then the light on the yellow. I don't want to lose that, so I'm going to keep that intact. But I think over here, I'm just going to go a little bit more into the greens. You'll notice I'm not working on any of these areas for too long. And the reason for that is I'll end up with a load of hard edged drawing lines. There are times when you can use backgrounds and things like that for drama. But um, on this occasion, I just want to maintain that lovely smoothness to these leaves. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the original leaves that I started with this paler underwash. So here's the original dark green I made. Just because it's been sitting for a few minutes, it started to separate somewhat. So you do need always to stir these colours. And these aren't particularly staining uh, pigments. The cadmium has uh, somewhat of a granulating effect and somewhat of an opaque effect. So it does just need a little bit of a stir so that the colour comes back to sort of even distribution. And all I'm going to do now is paint it on the uh, the original big three leaves, leaving the veins to be the lighter colour. So I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to do them quite methodically. So let's have a look at this large one here at the bottom. Rather than just start randomly adding dark paint and then ending up with drying lines and all sorts of nonsense going on, I'm going to make it much easier for myself. I'm going to start one side of the, of the centre vein and work all the way around. So all I'm going to do is start up here. I've also got um, nearby some kitchen paper in case I need to, uh, some paper towel in case I need to dry my paintbrush. So what I'm doing is I'm just stopping short of that pencil line taking this colour over the top. So what happens now is that original colour then becomes the colour of the vein. So we don't have to worry about any white gaps showing because we knocked them all out at the beginning. So again, I'm going to come around the other side of the vein there. You know, Don't worry if you paint over the tiniest bit of the veins. It's bound to happen with this technique. But as long as you leave some of them on show, it's all going to be fine. Now, as I'm coming round, what I can also do is get an idea of that uh, of that shine. Now, I wouldn't be able to take my paintbrush across the whole leaf because I'd smudge in all of the veins that I was keeping. But what I can do is just quickly, while it's still damp, I can rinse and dry my paintbrush and then it will actually pick up some paint. Again, rinse and dry, pick up some pigment. And can you see how we're getting that idea of a little bit of a sheen? on the leaves. Now this edge here is drying. I don't want to let that happen so I'm going to go straight round. Now you notice I'm not leaving any puddles here which means I shouldn't get any backgrounds because I want that nice smoothness that you get with rose leaves. Working my way down and keeping that leading edge wet all the time. That wouldn't be possible if I were working in too many different areas at once. Now this leaf actually goes off the paper so you can almost sort of divide it in two and give yourself a little bit of a break in the middle. So again, I just want to rinse and dry my paintbrush. I'm going to use my paintbrush just to lift out 
a little bit of a highlight, a little bit of shine on that leaf. And then straight in with the wet brush again and keep going. So now I've got down the centre of that leaf and it's gone off the paper. So the other side doesn't touch it at all because it's all divided by those veins. So I can give myself a little break and think, oh, I've done that. Nobody phoned me up and then I can go on and do the other side. I've painted my three big leaves here and you can see I've put a bit of red in this one up here as well. So I'm going to go on now and paint this leaf here. Now I'm a bit worried about this area here because you can't really see the difference between the bud and the leaf behind it. So I'm probably going to do what I call glazing, which is put a layer of paint across that back leaf in a little while, just to sort of knock it back a bit and make it a bit darker. But I'm not gonna do that yet because I can't paint on both these leaves at once in case one runs into the other. So what I'll do now is paint this leaf here, just to show you how you can drop one color in um, and then another. So what I'm gonna do here is, again, I'm going in with that same dark green that I mixed at the start and we'll start up the top here and then as we come down I'm going to put some of the red in so you can see the um you can see the red as it is pure here on the uh, in the center of the bud but putting it next to the green will have quite a different effect and make it actually much darker so working this down here being careful with my edges and you'll notice that anywhere that there's a light rose petal like here, it's going to really, really show it up. So the drama of the dark leaves shows up the light of the pink. And you really have to make sure you get those color combinations working for you. When people have trouble with, uh, with tonal contrast, what happens is they end up going in with pen and things like that. And it's usually unnecessary. You should only work in pen if you plan to work in pen. Don't just randomly swap to working in pen because your tonal contrasts aren't working. So what we do here is we go in with that red, mix it in with the green, and you see this drama that we're getting going on here with this leaf. So I'm just taking the point of my brush and coming around the end. Make sure that you can always see the point of your brush. If you can't see the edge of your brush and you're trying to sort of poke at your picture from the wrong side as it were, and the brush is um, is physically um, in the way of your eyes and stopping you seeing the edge. You've no chance of painting neatly if that's what you want to do. So there we are. I'm quite happy with that. I might just um, get a little bit of shaping on it by taking that clean damp brush there and taking a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to show you next how to do a technique I call ghost leaves. So you'll notice I have a few leaves here that are sort of behind things. Um, this may even be one leaf here, but we want to sort of push them back. You can't have every single leaf being bright and in your face. So there's a technique I call ghost leaves that I learned from watching the, uh, the guy that taught me to paint. And he often had huge vases of flowers, there'd be loads of bright green leaves. And at the back, there'd be some that were just painted literally it's flat washes and literally very sort of very muted and very greyed out. And what that does is gives you this three dimensions. It shows you that some leaves are really bright and close to you and others are further back. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to take the paint I used initially. Still rather, um, rather mucky, this palette, but it won't matter for what I'm doing here. Put some water in and then I'm going to drop in some of the purple that we used at the beginning. I'm going to push this green almost into grey. I'm going to really sort of um, cool it down, maybe a bit of blue as well cool it down and sort of neutralize it. So you're looking at making the color um, slightly lighter, slightly grayer, slightly bluer. So popping in the blue and the purple there and just knocking that color right back so that it's cooler and lighter than the greens in the front. So I'm gonna put a bit of that on my scrap of paper and see if I like it. Always try your colors out first. And there you can see, you can see it's much bluer and much more neutral. I'm going to make it slightly lighter than that as well, just by adding a little bit more water. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that on these leaves that are behind that we don't want to draw too much attention to. And we're just going to pop that color behind. And we're going to keep the painting in those areas completely flat because these are just my ghost leaves. These are the leaves that sit behind the others 
they're not about drama they're just about um, giving that idea of three dimensions and some leaves in the background and I'm going to go all the way across this leaf so painting evenly right the way across the leaf without leaving puddles just as I showed you on the flat wash video and then you have this impression of a leaf with no detail in it whatsoever because when things are further away from us we can't see any detail on them so the fact that the leaf is painted flatly will in itself push it back and then the uh, the fact that the colors are cooler and slightly lighter will also push it back so technically my painting could be finished there's paint on every area of the greens but um, I'm not entirely happy with all of it so at this stage of the painting I just want to look around and see if I'm happy particularly with tonal contrast and see if every area is working now there are some pencil lines in these veins I will rub out when I'm certain that the paint is 100% dry but other than that there are areas that don't seem to be working as effectively as they could be the stems here are not showing up as much as they could be so I'm going to adjust them I'm also going to put a wash over this leaf here now although on its own it looks beautiful you should never sacrifice the overall look of your painting for one area so I really do feel that this needs knocking back and making darker so that this light bud in the front shows up so what I'm going to do is take some of that original dark green I made and water it down and I'm going to do what they call a glaze which means I'm going to take that color across the whole area to darken it so let's put this on as I said it is covering up some of that prettiness but you really mustn't um, mustn't allow areas to sort of take over and and just distract from the overall structure of the picture and unless I go dark behind this bud I don't think it's going to show up effectively enough so let's put that darker wash over the top and see how that looks and this uh, this idea of um, putting a glaze or a wash of color on top of another one is something you can repeat as many times as you want to so already I think that area is looking better let me move it further onto camera just in case you can't see it properly so there we are I've knocked it back so that hopefully you can see the brightness of the bud now I've just got one or two areas here on these stems which I think are not showing up as effectively as they could be so I'm going to put some clean water over this little stem here and just take a little bit of um, I'm going to go straight in with some blue actually and just take it down the edge slightly what this does is it makes it look a bit more um, three-dimensional and just sweep it out a little bit there touch of it on the other side and just to strengthen that the same on this one here the color contrast is not entirely working down this uh, yellow edge so I'm going to take clean water over. I'm really just getting the tiniest touch of blue on my paintbrush. Really the uh, the paint that I'm going for is, is dry and so it's just, just picking up a tiny touch of blue and I can make that uh, show up a little bit more effectively. This one again here, I think we need a bit of um, dark down the edge. So again, I'm going to go in with clean water I'm going to use the red this time because that leaf's got a lot of that stem has got a lot of red on. So I'm going to use the red to take down the edge there. And just again strengthen that tonal contrast so that that stem shows up. And the final one I'm going to look at is the one over here. Again taking clean water over it and then a little bit of dark down the edge. I think I'm going to go red on one side and then with the uh, with the blue on the other so just the tiniest touch of paint on my brush there take that down the edge you don't want it to look outlined or stripy so do blend in again just a tiny touch of blue on my paintbrush just to pick up that other edge there we're just looking at making these sh things show up effectively this leaf here is uh, is also not showing up against the background and that is lack of tone because the tone of the leaf and the tone of the background are similar so again in with the clean water and putting the water on stops me from getting a hard edge in the area that i work in if i just took some more paint down one side of it i'd get a nasty drying line in the middle of that leaf so re-wetting the whole leaf just to stop that happening and then again taking a little bit of dark and going down the edge 
And you do blend across because you don't want it to look like you're outlining the leaf, but you are increasing the, uh, the tonal contrast on the edge there. And I think we'll also go a little bit redder around this side here. So that we up the contrast here between the leaf and that lilac background. So I think overall I'm pretty happy with that painting. All I'll do now is let it dry and I'll take a rubber across and just pick up any bits of pencil that are left lying on the painting. So do let me know in the comments if there are any other flower or leaf tutorials you would like me to make videos for. If you enjoyed this video please do give it the thumbs up, give it a like and um, if you can share and subscribe that would be great too. Now if you've heard a lot of terrible myths about watercolour painting and some really scary stuff like um, it's the hardest medium there is or you can't adjust mistakes, I have a video that you might really enjoy and I go through 10 things that I hear commonly said about watercolour painting and whether or not they're true and here's a spoiler, most of them aren't. I think you're going to love the video, you can watch it right now.